around my wrist. All right, my beautiful people. What is up? My name is Brian, and today I'll be showing you how a—not how I use it, but uh, what Twixter does in general, and how you can use it to like its full effect. I guess. I mean, I'm not a pro at it at all. I'm just using it for quite a while now, and I think uh, it should help you out a bit and just play around with it. So I've set up a few clips. Well, basically, it's all the same clip. It's just different FPS. Because uh, Fixer uses that, and I'll be showing you what it kind of does with that. Alright, let's just first uh, first set up the song. Let's see what can we use here. Alright, that should be usable, I guess. Oh no, no, mind. Here's the drop. Uh, there you go. Let's just uh, let's just use this point here. It's quite nice. Uh, let's just use these these two points and this point as well, so I can kind of show you what Twixter does, etc. Alright, let's just first start with like the 30 FPS clip because that's probably the worst FPS you can actually have for Twixter. Um, so what Twixter does, uh, I usually just use Pro. I don't know why, but whatever. Uh, what Twix actually does is it warps frames together when it's slow mo's. So actually, when you have uh, little frames, it's gonna warp, and it looks disgusting. Actually, all right, let's just first set it up. Um, we have a clip like this with actually the end and the start point. It doesn't really matter what you do, but once you like start cutting and just doing like this kind of stuff, because you have actually have like stuff in front of it, always put a keyframe at 100 before it starts otherwise it's gonna affect this part as well even though it's not visible it's gonna affect it so always just put a keyframe on 100 before and it's usually just something I usually do it's kind of muscle memory even though I didn't cut it or whatever I just do it in case you never know so we set our keyframe here and yeah this clip is actually 30 fps so you'll, you'll probably see what's up all right so let's just uh, increase the value here a bit like I don't know to uh, 500 or something uh, I don't know, let's, put it, let's just do 3 point Because yeah, why not? It's disgusting, but whatever It's a 19 And you can, you can already see it here, what it actually does uh, Put a keyframe to 300 here Alright, but we want to get to here So how do you do that? Uh, what you can do is just mix up time remap and Twixter So what you do is just enable time remap by pressing Ctrl, Alt and T what this does is it enables time remap, as you can see by the keyframes here. This actually uh, means the begin point and the end point. What you can do is just drag this out. Even though it's not visible now, a Twixer keeps cal calculating. So what you can do is just put it at 8 or something. And then put it back to, uh, I don't know, like 500. Alright, uh, let's just preview this. Let's see how disgusting this looks. Alright, it makes no sense at all. But let's just uh, fix this a bit with the graph editor, which is actually our friend here. Alright, so sele select all the keyframes. You can do this by just dragging like this, just clicking and dragging, or you can just click this and it enables, uh, it selects all the keyframes. And I just go to the graph editor. Alright, this looks pretty uh, weird. So let's just uh, enable all the keyframes and uh, enable easy ease. You can do this by clicking on this button right here, or just press F9, uh, like this. And let's try and make this something. Alright, so let's just uh, drag this down. Uh, move it a bit. It's a bit down. It's a bit down. Probably better to do it like this though. Give it more impact. Uh, let's try some stuff just for the sake of the tutorial. I don't know if it's gonna look good, it's gonna probably look alright. Alright, this looks pretty bad actually. So we we can't get it there. Uh, let's just try it out though. Drag this out, drag this out a bit. We should be able to get here though. Uh, I'll just lower these values. Well, whatever, let's, I'll just leave it. Um, alright, so yeah, you can actually see what Twixer does with 30 FPS. Um, it actually just warps the shit out of it because it can't blend frames together. Just because we're going that low, um, it just looks disgusting in my opinion. Well, it actually does just look disgusting. We can actually use it for like effect-wise or whatever, but it's just 
your thing, I guess. I don't fucking know. Um, for the options, actually, it's actually pretty straightforward, I guess. Um, image prep that basically preps the uh, image, I guess. I mean, contrast and edge looks, contrast and edge enhance looks better in my opinion. I mean, in this case, it doesn't really matter. Warping is actually interesting because the, as you can see, it actually warps the edges as well because of the movement. And if we put it on inverse, it's gonna, I don't know, do that as well. I mean, 30 FPS is just shit. Just don't use it at all. It's just not worth it. And as you can see, it's not really that much better, but. That's why I just leave 30 FPS like this. It's just not recommended to edit with 30 FPS clips with Twixter because it does all this ugly shit. Alright, let's get that over with. Um, I mean, let's just try uh, 60 FPS. Alright, so what I did there just to replace the footage is Alt click on the file and just drag it in there. It should be good. Uh, as you can see, see, this is already a bit better. Oh, never mind. I forgot to change this. Let's put it to 60. As you can see, it's a lot better, I guess. I mean, it's not the best, but it does the job, I guess. Let's just cut it to there, because we won't reach that. I mean, it's not the best, but it works. You can fix that if you actually carefully uh, move the graph editor and shit. You can actually, like, Get some pretty decent results at 60 FPS clips as well. Uh, see, you don't really have any warping here. Pretty good. Ah, there you go. Pretty good for 60 FPS clips. <laughs> Twix are actually, uh, it, it really depends on your settings and actually the clips. Because as you can see, it's pretty alright now. But as you saw with the 30 FPS, it just looks terrible. So 60 FPS is actually the minimum you need, in my opinion. Otherwise, you just can't make smooth stuff at all. Because that's what Twixer like, enhances in, I guess, if you say that like that. It just, it's so smooth when you actually have high FPS clips. And I'm going to show you that now, because I have a 600 clip as well. Alright, let's just uh, replace that as well with Alt and click. So we actually keep the same settings. And as you can see here, it does no warping at all. It's just really smooth. And one positive thing about the warping as well is that you can actually get really low. Unlike your velocity. So we're gonna try this. Uh, let's just delete those keyframes and delete that as well. So we're gonna go to 500. Go down to, I don't know, like 52, 28, uh, 13, 6. 38 and 300. I don't know, like 400. Um, let's drag it just out a bit, drag it a bit in. As you can see, it does a little bit of warping, but it's not. Oh fuck, I forgot to change the setting again. My bad. There you go. Um, let's do this really quick. Just don't learn from me, please. I don't like the syncing part. I'm just here to explain this fucking plugin. <laughs> this is legit the worst part about my editing is actually velocity and bankrupt, so no flavor, no please. Alright, so let's just check this out. You probably see no warping at all. It actually goes really goes down really smoothly. There you go. It's basically about the settings and the actual uh, graph and, and stuff. Um, it's just a lot of playing around. Tricks are actually a bitch. If you if you if you know how to use it, like at least decently, like I kind of do, I guess. It's a really nice plugin because you can get really smooth um, syncing. Because I'm going down to six here. I could probably go down to two as well, and you, you'll see. It just doesn't do anything. Even though it doesn't really fit here, but still. Um, another thing about Twixter, it's, it's really demanding. Like, it, it wants to be on top of everything, basically. Like, if you add, for example, I don't know, like a blur here. Let's just add like a, uh, yeah, one of the 300 fucking blurs I have. Uh, box blur, why not? Um, Alright, so let it put it to three. Uh, it, it has no problems with it. 
because it's actually below it, but if I put it above it, it's just gonna be a bitch. Like, it's not gonna do shit. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Well, it did, of course, never mind. I didn't see it. It actually doesn't blur it. You can play with the values whatever you want, but it's not gonna blur it. Because Trix is always gonna use the, the actual footage, so it's not gonna calculate any stuff before it. If that makes sense, so if you want to apply effects and all that kind of stuff, you have to put it like below it, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, so that's like a main rule, always put Twixter first, like on top of everything. And outside of that, like there's nothing really special about it, I guess. I mean, you can use it for effects wise as well. Uh, so, we, so we have this thing, um, let's, I don't know, use it as an effect, I guess. Let's just try, try it out. Um, Alright, so... Let's just keep the sync the same and put the FPS lower. So you're actually gonna see like some warping probably. You see like there's some warping there. And we can use that as like an effect I guess. So... I don't know, let's just put a U on there. Uh, play around the U a bit. I don't know, like... More like this. Put the saturation up a bit. Uh, just like this. Add this a bit up. Put this, I don't know, to pin light or something. Uh, bring this up a lot. Bring this up like a lot as well. And uh, maybe you can put the FPS even lower to like 10. Uh, yeah. Put it a bit down, I don't know. As you can see, we can actually use the warping to our advantage. I mean, you can use this in whatever situation you want. But. As you can see, the it kind of warps a bit, especially there. You can see it here, because that's that's his lag actually. And because if we set it to 10 FPS, it's going to calculate it as 10 FPS. You can put it to 2 as well, and it's going to be really bad. Like the warping. I mean, this can give a pretty cool effect, as you can see. Here. Could speed up, speed it up there, so it's going to try and keep it there. I mean, you can just play around with it. Um, another thing about Twixter, if you want to copy it to a layer, the actual effect is going to crash. So you can't like click on the effect, uh, copy it and paste it on, the, on another layer, and that's not going to work. Um, if you want to do that, you just have to copy the keyframes, and what that's going to do is... Uh, let's just remove everything on this. Um, let's just copy these keyframes and paste it here. You're actually going to get a, like, a default Twixter. But with the keyframes, so you have to like adjust the keyframe, uh, the settings. I mean, so you're gonna put this to like uh, 600 and uh, to your usual settings, and it's actually fine. Um, and outside of that, that's basically it. Um, it's just really interesting plugin, and my main my main way of using it is for sync. I kind of use it for some effects, but whatever. I don't know. You just play with it and do what you do. What you have to do basically. Uh, and yeah, that's basically what I have to tell about Twixter. Uh, this is a really on the spot tutorial, so I don't know if it's good if you learn something. It's kind of messy, but it was kind of messy in my head. I mean, we're only recording for 40 minutes and I just explained like how to basically use it. I'm just, I'm just a retard, just leave me, right? So yeah, that's it basically. That's basically how I use my Twixter and yeah, that's it boys. I hope you learned something. Have a good day.